Hello and welcome. As you listen to this inspired teaching by Pastor Tayo Tychus of Abundant Life Chapel, we hope that you have an encounter with God, are encouraged, and learn practical ways to live a purposed and abundant life in Christ. Enjoy this teaching. It is a firm 
foundation My life is in your hands I build my life with you Jesus Oh, bless you Lord And I will not be shaken Hallelujah. Welcome. Such a joy once again to bring the word of God to you. Uh, right now, you're probably in your living room uh, as we're going through this uh, COVID pandemic. So get the family together, bring everyone, invite someone, uh, tell them the word of God is about to come forth. You know, let's have church together. God has been so good. Uh, you know, maybe you're yeah, like me, you're having a bad hair day. That's all right. Uh, but, you know, let's just have fun in God's presence. Uh, in this season, you know, God has been keeping us. God has been preserving us. Uh, yes, there's uh, commotion and trouble everywhere, but our God is an amazing God. Uh, reminds me of the time uh, in the Bible in John chapter 6 where Jesus was talking to his disciples and, and the Bible records that some of the disciples said, this thing is a hard thing. They said what Jesus is telling us is extremely hard. As a matter of fact, it records that, that some of the disciples left Jesus on that day, so much so that Jesus would ask his disciples, would you also leave me? And Peter said something that I love so much. He said, where else can we go? In you is the word of life. That's really been my, my, my feeling uh, this, this past two months. Where else would I go but to Jesus with the corona pandemic? What else am I going to do? but to run to the master and run to God. Uh, Jesus lets us know in that same chapter that the flesh profits nothing. There's nothing we can do with our own strength of our own volition. There's nothing we can do. It says it is the spirit that gives us life. It is the spirit that gives us life. And so this morning, what I want to talk about is our commitment in a crisis. Uh, usually that's when commitment is tested, not when everything is hunky-dory and everyone is, ha is happy, you know, but when there's a crisis, that's when you can really, really, really tell uh, who's committed. And so I want to ask you this morning, are you committed to God in a way that God wants you to be? Because God is going to test that. God wants you to stay with him in the good, in the bad, in the ugly. Uh, it's, it's amazing. We're just one week away uh, removed from Easter. And, and I want to use that same text and that same setting in the Bible, how the disciples had just finished Easter and, well, in their case, the resurrection, you know, Jesus had just gone to be with the Lord, but it was a time of uncertainty. It was a time of fear. Uh, they had thought Jesus would come and, you know, remove the, the Roman Empire and, and take place as, as the king. But now Jesus has died. The one that, that they thought, you know, was going to do all that. Extremely interesting. You know how after Easter, all the fanfare and the parade was over. And for those disciples, I imagine it must have been an emotional um, roller coaster, really, um, from the triumphant entry to the Passover to, to Jesus dying on Friday. And, you know, he said he would resurrect on Sunday. But here they are in, in a confused place in John 21. John 21, I uh, should come up on your screen. But in John 21, uh, the ex we see a very, very interesting uh, story where Peter announces to the others and to all the disciples. And Peter says, I am going fishing. I'm going fishing. And the other guy says, well, we go with you. You know, I'm going fishing and we're going to go with you. And so Peter says, let's go. Let's, let's, let's go back to, to what we know. Let's go back to the old. Let's go back to, to, to where we're safe um, is, is, is really is a place of fear. And they say, we are going with you. But how many of you know that was not the instruction Jesus gave? That was not what Jesus told them. Um, in Acts chapter 1, we see the, the, the record of Luke, you know, where he says that Jesus had told them that that go and wait for me, go and wait for me. And then when you receive the Holy Spirit, you would receive power in this season more than ever before. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need the power of God. Uh, right now, prayer is our greatest asset, is our greatest arsenal uh, for this pandemic where we've tried everything. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus had told them, go and wait for me. 
journey and go and wait for the power of the Holy Spirit, but not Peter. At this time, Peter is scared. Peter is like, what exactly just happened? Um, you know, he spent the, the better part of the, of the last three and a half years following Jesus and all of a sudden, all their hope is dashed. All, all, all their dreams and aspirations and everything, it appeared to have died with Jesus but not Jesus. In Acts 1, like I read, um, let me read, it says that Jesus told them that if you wait in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Verse 8 is what I've been referencing, that, that when, when you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, you would receive power. That's what they needed first. But I like how someone, whilst uh, Jesus was saying this, uh, Luke recorded this, uh, someone was, um, Jesus was interrupted, really, in Luke chapter 1, verse 6. It says, therefore, when they had come together, they Asked, they asked him, Jesus, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? In other words, Lord, are you going to take away this Roman Empire and give us back everything? And, and are you going to do this for us? And Jesus said, it is not for you to know times and seasons. Verse 8, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in all Jerusalem, all Judea, all Samaria and to all the ends of the earth doesn't sound like fishing to me. You know, when the first time Jesus met Peter, he says, come, follow me. I will make you fishers of men. And we know the story how Peter left everything and he went with Jesus. But we see at this moment where Peter is beginning to doubt and, 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 and beginning to be afraid. You know, on that morning, you know, no one knew what to do. Uh, Jesus had died. Yes, he's resurrected, but everyone at this stage doesn't know. Thomas, we know, is, is, is doubtful anyway. And this guy say, we are going fishing. We are going fishing. And all the guys there said, we go with you. We go with you. And so let's look at the story, how they say they're going to go fishing. John 21 says, after what Jesus appeared to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, it says, it happened this way that Simon Peter and Thomas, also called Didymus, or like I like to call him Didi, uh, <laughs> Nathaniel from Cana, the sons of Zebedee, all these guys. And Peter says, I'm going to fish. And then they said, we are going with you. We are going with you. But the Bible records that they went out and that night they caught nothing. They didn't catch anything. I strongly, strongly believe Jesus arranged it so. Jesus uh, has a way to tell Nemo and everyone, not today. You're going to stay away. No one is catching you today. That night, they didn't catch anything. So let's answer some questions this morning. Have you been tempted to, to say, you know what, I'm going to go back to the old way? And, and if that happens, what is, what is the response of Jesus? Have you, have you thought about you know, just giving up and just quitting? And let's be honest, in this time, in this season, many people have had doubt. Many people are wondering, well, if there's a God, why is this happening? Uh, Peter was in the same place. Peter we know was the most garrulous disciple, always quick to answer and love Jesus. But at this time, Peter had a moment where he was afraid. Peter says, you know what, guys, forget all this Jesus. You know, maybe it was just, you know, a figment of our imagination. Let's get away from this. Peter says, I am going fishing. And all the disciples also said, let's go with you. So really, at that moment, everyone was doubting. But here comes Jesus. I love how Jesus visited them. You know, Peter didn't know what to do is like I've spent so much time in this I've spent so much time with Jesus have you ever you know struggled or spent time with something and like Peter and like the disciples it says that night they caught nothing there's some times and some seasons in our lives probably like now that it looks like nothing is working it looks like everything is just going down these guys were were convinced. I mean, these guys were professional fishermen. And on that night, they couldn't catch anything. They had told and done everything. First of all, they shouldn't have been there, you know, when they said, I'm going fishing. And so let me start with, with some small examples to bring it home uh, to you to see how in many instances, every now and then, we go back to our old ways. Maybe you've made a commitment to your devotional life and you've, you've made a commitment and I'm going to set an alarm and, and I'm going to pray and I'm going to study the word and I'm going to do this. And every now and then, it's not long before something comes and, and you start pressing the snooze button just a little longer. Or like now that all the days are meshed up, it's hard to even find time 
uh, to be with the master. Or, or maybe you've, you've, you've said, you know what, I'm going to follow the biblical principle of tithing. You know, but in this time, it's like, well, there's no way I can do it, even though you're still working, you know, and, and, and the bills are covered. But it's like, I can't do this. And, and maybe there's something that you're like, you know what, this is not just working. I'm going to go back. And saints, let me tell you right now, there is a problem with going back. Going back is never the way going forward. There's a problem where, where you don't, you shouldn't go back. There's, there's an interesting story in my mind, similar to this time, really, in the Old Testament. You, you probably know it, where God had used Moses to bring out the Israelites out of Egypt. Now, this is after 400 years of slavery. But at every problem, at every opposition, these guys complained, the wine, so much so one time that they told Moses, is is it because there are not enough graves in Egypt? Now, why would you bring us out here? Can I go back? And Moses is probably wondering what in the world is wrong with these guys. That should never be an option to go back. Wouldn't it be better, this guy said, for us to die in Egypt? Wouldn't it be better for us to, to die in slavery? It's like, yes, we were slaves, but, but we had three square meals. How come here in the desert we have to wait on God and, and we have to depend on God? Saints, God tells us in Romans chapter six Paul says we are no longer slaves God has freed us God has delivered us you should never have that feeling of going back of of going back to a place that God has removed for you every time God is delivering his people he always tells them don't look back it's time to keep going forward remember Lot in the Bible God told them, it's time for you to come out of Sodom and Gomorrah, come out of that place. And God says, don't look back, keep running. And we know the story, uh, the, the old childhood tale, how when Lot turned back, she was turned, Lot's wife, excuse me, uh, to, to a pillar of salt. God is saying, do not look back, do not look back. I know right now there's so many things that are going on. I hear like, Lord, what in the world is going on? And times like this, we always want to go back into our shell and, and go back to what we know but God is telling Peter don't look back yes you're going to face temptation as Christians yes you're going to face, face temptation I mean this guy said wow Jesus what you're saying is difficult but remember saints that Jesus had called Peter to not just a fishing trade but to be a fisher of men and to carry Jesus in a way that no one else had ever done don't look back. It happens to the best of us. John the Baptist, who was the one who proclaimed Jesus. John the Baptist said, I'm not worthy to tie his shoelace. And, and he says, behold the Lamb of God. But when John the Baptist was imprisoned, John the Baptist had a moment of doubt where he had to send some people to go ask Jesus, are you the one or should we look for another? What happened was John the Baptist is saying, Jesus, if you're really the Savior, why am I, why am I here? And I love the response of Jesus. He told them, go and tell John the Baptist everything that you're saying that ought to let him know that I'm the one in other words keep faith John just because you're in prison doesn't mean God is not with you and so so many times we would encounter things in this season so many people are dealing with loss of income and and, and sickness or, or family members seek so many different things but the, our confidence is that God is with us God God says I will be with you everywhere that you go and so I love this story because really what Jesus was doing was he wanted to tell Peter that I'm still here for you. I love you, Peter. I know you messed up and I know you denied me three times because when we read the story, the moment Jesus came to them as, as I continue. Jesus says that, are you, are you, um, have you, do you have any fish? Of course, he knew the answer to that. I love that Jesus comes in a way that is familiar to us. And so it, it was funny that he came to Peter, first of all, when Peter had gone fishing and, and, and filled Peter's nets with fish the first time. Now he's doing it a second time. And so Jesus goes to Peter and he asks, have you caught anything? Have you caught anything? In other words, Peter, if you're going back, what does that mean for you? And Bible says, it lets us know that that night they didn't catch anything. Saints, I'm saying all this to let you know that never, 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 never consider going back. Keep pushing with God. Keep going with God. Remember the story of Elijah and Elisha. And from the very, very first moment that Elijah went to recruit and went to anoint Elisha. When Elisha came to him and said, I'm going to follow him, Elijah said, 
go back, but I love Elisha. Elisha said, I will go anywhere but backwards. That should be uh, your, 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 your mindset in this season, that I'm going anywhere but backwards. I'm going to walk with God. I'm going to run with God. Yes, God is going to test you. God is going to challenge you, but let's go with God. Let's, let's, let's work with God. God always tests your commitment. He always tests your commitment. It's for, it's for his sons. Let me give you an example. Remember uh, back in Genesis 32, when, when Jacob was struggling um, really with, with a pre-incarnate Christ. They call the, the word used as the angel of the Lord, but it was a pre-incarnate Christ. And, and the angel picked up the fight with, with Jacob. And, and as the Bible records, saw that the morning was, was about to break and said, let me go. And I love Jacob. Jacob says, I will not let you go unless you you bless me. Truth be told, I almost feel like I, I, the, the angel of God wanted that response for Jacob. The angel of God would have been disappointed if, if Jacob said, yes, that's it. I'm going to let you go. Um, I think the angel of God was happy that that is exactly the answer I was looking for. Because on that day, Jacob was turned and transformed to Israel. On that day, Jacob became Israel, the prince of God. Saints, there is always a blessing for those who endure. The Bible says in the book of James that blessed are the ones who endure temptation. They will receive a crown. It doesn't say blessed are the ones who jump out and who quit. No, blessed are the ones who endure. You have to go through it. In order to have a breakthrough, you must go through. And so God is saying, let's go. Let's go. God is saying, stay with me. Stay with me. Be committed to me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If that you that like Peter, God is coming to say, no, don't go back to your fishing. Don't, don't go back to your old ways. Don't go back to prayerlessness. Don't go back to fatigue. Don't go back to doubt and questioning me every time. If that is you, type an amen right now. Usually I'll say, can I get an amen? But type an amen. Let me know that you're watching this and you agree that God is saying, I've blessed you. There's a blessing for your commitment. The Bible says that do not be weary in doing good. Why? That, what that tells me is that some people get tired in doing good. Some people get tired that I did it once and I did it twice. Nothing is happening. No. Jesus says, do not be weary. Paul tells us, do not be weary. Don't get tired. Keep doing good. Keep doing good. Keep doing good. It says, in due season, you will receive your reward. So Peter, you're on the boat right now, but God is saying, no, this is not what I called you to. And the Bible records that on that night, they caught nothing. And I'll jump a little bit into, into how and why and the transformation probably next week. But what I see, one thing, some, some uh, obstacles to, to total commitment. I want to go through a few real quick. We all face obstacles to, to commitment. If it were easy, everyone would do it, truth be told. But there's something for the one who says, I'm going to stay here. There's the obstacle of distraction. There's always a distraction. Right now, there are distractions galore, like just a million. If you get on the news or, 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 or some text, some email, some family member, everyone has something, uh, a solution. And, but God is saying, no, don't be distracted. Bible says in Isaiah 50 verse 7, the prophet of God said, I have set my face as a flint so I will not be moved. Don't be distracted. God is saying, stand firm in me. Don't be distracted. Don't, don't just go with everything that comes your way. No, God is saying, stay with me and look on me, the author and the finisher of your faith. Keep your eyes always on me. Don't be distracted. Saints, in this season, there's so many distractions, so many things are coming up. There's, 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 there's uh, you know, 5G and some conspiracy. No, God is saying, don't be distracted distracted. All those things can be happening, but I need you to stay with me. I need you to look at me. Peter, I told you before now what exactly was going to happen. That's why I started in John 6 that says the, pro the, the flesh profits us nothing, but it's the spirit that gives us life the obstacle of distraction. And when you're distracted, what happens is there's so many things. Distraction is, is two words, is divided attractions. 
everything is attracting you everything is trying to get your mind everything and then what happens is you can never concentrate on one and you can never accomplish anything because there's this distraction and that distraction no bring everything in romans 3 it says let every other voice be a liar and let god's voice be true so you have to get rid of the obstacle of distraction you have to get rid secondly of the obstacle of discouragement peter was extremely discouraged peter is like i worked with this guy for three and a half years i thought we we're going to do so many great things remember the sons of zebedee they were the ones that asked jesus when we go up to your temple who will be the greatest who will stay on the right hand who's going to have this who's going to do this and jesus all that time was telling them it's not about that guys the greatest will be the one that serves obviously that that lesson didn't really register because when peter said i go fishing all of them said we're going with you it, it records all the disciples that were there um dd and and the sons of zebedee and everyone they all went with Peter. They all said, forget this. Let's just go and do what we know how to do. In this season, don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. I know it's hard. I know there's, there's a lot of bad news, but you have to get in the place like David in Psalm 42. I love it. David said that I command my soul. David was talking to himself. He was talking to his soul. It says, my soul, why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God. Hope in God. That's my hope, saints. My hope is in nothing else, like the songwriter said, but Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hope in God. Don't be discouraged. Don't be put down. Don't be fallen. God is for you. And if God is with you, Psalm 46, God says, I will be with you. Be still and know that I am God. Don't be discouraged. The third obstacle that I want to touch on today is the one of disappointment you see disappointment what it does is you never try again Peter immediately, Jesus asked him, have you caught anything? Peter says, we have caught nothing. And many times people, we stay there. We stay in that place of disappointment. We stay in that place where we feel like I've failed. We stay in that place where we feel like I've tried that before and, and it didn't work. No, God is saying, go again. God is saying, go and do it. You know, God is saying there is a gain in again. A, the word and gain. G-A-I-N, there's a gain in again. Go again. Don't be disappointed because what we see is, yes, Peter, and the disciples had worked all night. Can you imagine six, seven disciples casting their nets, not catching anything the entire night? These are guys that they've been doing this from birth. They knew exactly what they were doing. But Jesus deliberately made it so because immediately Jesus told them, cast your nets to the other side. Bible records the, the big haul of fish that they brought. But can you imagine if out of disappointment, Peter said, we're not going to do it. If out of disappointment, Peter said, you don't understand. I've been doing this. I've been here. Who are you telling me what to do? Don't be disappointed, saints. Let's keep walking with God. Habakkuk chapter 2 lets us know that delay is not denial. Just because it hasn't happened now doesn't mean it still won't happen. Stay with God and keep working with God and keep praying and keep talking to God and say, Lord, I know you're going to come through for me. The destiny that God has given you is a great one and, and things, some certain things take time. God is preparing you. He's preparing your character. Peter, God is getting you ready to be able to preach for 3,000 people to come in. Peter, God is getting you ready because in Matthew 16, Jesus had told Peter that on this rock, I will build my church because when Jesus said who do men say that I am everyone said the prophet say this and this one says this but I love Peter's response Peter had a revelation Peter says you are the Christ and Jesus says that's what I've been looking for I will build my church on this and so it's going to take a while do not be discouraged I want to talk to everyone in this season that I know the days because you can't go out depression is at an all-time high uh, domestic violence unfortunately is rising because people are at home people are frustrated don't be discouraged saints trouble doesn't last always psalm 30 says that weeping may endure for a night but joy will surely come in the morning don't be discouraged god has got your back do not be discouraged because Peter at that moment says, Lord, nevertheless, nevertheless, at thy word, nevertheless. I'm going to touch on that next week because I can't even begin to jump in there. I'm not going to be able to stop. Nevertheless, I want to end with a scripture in John 10, in John 10, to let you know why you should be committed to God, that God is eternally, eternally, forever and ever committed to you. God in John 10, verse 28 
through 30. It says, and I, Jesus, I will give them eternal life. Saints, do you know something? Eternal life is not just when we die and we go to heaven. Eternal life or abundant life, like we always say in John 10, is not to die and go to heaven. No, eternal life starts from now. The abundant life Christ is talking about, it starts from now. It says, and I will give them eternal life and they shall never perish. They shall never perish. Saints, if you're going to believe the word of God, here is his word that you have to believe that you will never perish in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Another good place to type a big amen. God says you will never perish. Yes, there's Corona and there's COVID and whatever it is, but God says you're not going to perish. I'm going to keep you. I'm going to watch over you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I love how the psalmist says it. It says, my times are in your hands. So God says, I will give them eternal life you will not perish. It says, neither shall anyone or anything snatch them out of my hands. Nothing can take you away from the hands of the Almighty. Jeremiah says it this way. It says that I'm the apple of God's eye. Nothing can touch me. Verse 29 says, my father, God has given them to me who is greater than all. In other words, our God is greater than all. I know right now, Corona has had the headlines for a little bit, but there's a name that is supreme. There's a name that is higher than all other names. Philippians chapter two says that the name of Jesus is higher than every other name. It says our God is greater than all. And then Verse 30, it says, I and my father are one. Letting us know that, look, this thing has been determined from the beginning of time that no one and nothing can snatch you from the master's hand. And so stay committed in God. There's a reward from God for that. I'm going to end back again, really, just to look back where I started from in John 6. It's the same thing that was recorded in John 10, but I just want to say it again in John 6, in verse 63, it says, it is the spirit who gives life. The words profit nothing. It says, the words that I speak to you, here is Jesus, they are spirit and they are life. God's word is life to you. God's word is what will keep you in this season. And so be committed to God. Stay with God. When people are casting and uh, saying a casting down, you will prophesy a lifting up. It's not doubt. It's not that we don't see what is going on. It's not, it's not foolishness where we don't, you know, do what should be safe with, you know, the mask and wash our hands and everything. No, it's just saying that we're going to keep speaking the word of God. We're going to keep speaking the life of God as you stay committed in Christ. Christ. God bless you. God keep you. God watch over you. God cause his face to shine upon you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I love you. I'll see you again next week. Uh, what I would love for you to do, if you haven't already, download our app. You can see so many messages on there. Um, subscribe to our YouTube page. Uh, invite someone and just be a part of what we're doing. Uh, during this time where uh, there's isolation and so many things are going on, as a family, what we've really, really been trying to do is that, yes, you might be alone at home, but you don't have to be alone in, in everything else. And so if, if, every, if anyone is in need, we've been asking, just send us an email, alccares at abundantlife.church, uh, and we would do whatever we can uh, to help you out. Uh, and also, you know, it's a good time to say for the ones who uh, are in a better place, uh, you haven't lost income, definitely uh, support and be a, a financial partner to ALC. Uh, everything is still going on by God's grace. We've been able to meet most of our mail, uh, our bills, but also, you know, still be a blessing to people and still help people out. But we would love for you to financially partner with us. Uh, if this is your church, by all means, definitely tithe and, you know, just invite someone and let's just, you know, enjoy the presence of God. Next Sunday, come early, come ready. Uh, we're going to be talking about the word, nevertheless. Nevertheless, I'm going to pick up right from the story uh, where I stopped, how, you know, Peter says, nevertheless, less at thy word. All you need is one word from God. I'll see you next Sunday. God bless you.